Oi, oi, back in the game. Uh, yes, I'm wearing the same T-shirt, but I did record the other video only a handful of hours ago. Half five recording this on the Thursday. These are day three's bets for Saturday. Uh, we do have the results from day one. Been a pretty good day, but that's not what this is about. Um, day two's video, I was a bit loose on the actual bets that I'd struck, right? So although this is a day three video, I'm going to quickly, very quickly, just come through and tell you what I've actually struck on those. Because I talked about it in the other video. I started updating here. I can update in here. And then I'll give you all my bets for Saturday as well. Um, just on the top of this, please do make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a comment below. Um, but the main thing I want to just talk about in this one is I, I am going away, right? I've done. I've said that about 80 times in every single video. But it's, it's a definitely slightly different way of betting when that happens, right? Um, it's fine. Like, I'm really looking forward to it. But I'm very much like the type of person that I would rather be actually enjoying the moment of being over there like it's, it's a big day for friends and i want to be there to appreciate it so as much as i could do a few things in terms of tradey wise and have more money on certain things like bigger bets and do all sorts of stuff right i don't feel like i'm missing out on any of that there's nothing really different i would do there's just a couple of horses that maybe especially on the friday that i could think about betting that i haven't so we talked about that with i know the way you're thinking and with john bomb but it's all good right so these are what they are. So the main reason why I want to talk about that is obviously you've seen Thursday I had some reasonable size stakes. We've had a pretty good day. So well done if anyone followed me in. But obviously, I'm just telling you what I'm betting, right? So I don't want to be sporadic so much with my stakes and not really give an explanation towards it. I'll do something after this if, if there's any depth to it that people want to hear it. But again, I'll share an, a, a profit and lossy type thing. Try and be as transparent as I can. So I'm just trying to say that why... I don't know, some of the bets that I may have struck over the next couple of days, I don't think there's nothing wrong with anything, but just in case anyone questions why you're doing that, I'm not going to be able to reply to comments over the next couple of days because I'm going to be away. But please do comment away and I'm happy to reply after. Don't care if it's after the event. Um, I'm saying what I fancy now. Anywho, two minutes in and we still haven't talked about day three's bets yet, have we? Let's quickly touch on day one. Um, day one, day two, just for the pure fact that I've actually now pretty much got my bets sorted on that because I'm living my best life. So I know the way you're thinking, first race, haven't bet, will not bet in that grade one novices chase. I could, don't want to, I'm not going to. Second race, I talked about the horse I bet in there, Katira in the water side. In the water side is a little bit weak on the exchange. I backed Katira. I talked about the fact that I might have some more in the water side. I'm not. I'm leaving it as it is, right? So I've got 37.50 on Katira, 12.50 in the water side. Re relatively paid 350 for Katira, um, 155 for in the water side. I'll just leave it as that. I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. Let's just, just go with there. In the grade one novice hurdle, I talked about the fact that I want the exchanges to open up so I can get some money on the place market because the three places will stay up for grabs. Talked about the fact that I was happy with 1.8. Now, the market has opened up. I can leave some money sat there to do it, but I can get 1.8 on bet 365 through someone. So I've had 125 on there to, to basically, I'm saying Nick 100, to get 100 back. So I'm just going to leave it as that, okay? I did say 175 for about doing a win bet. I, I do like Firefox. I respect Mystical Power. But for the sake of it, I'm doing that. I'm happy with where I am. I'm, that's that's the bet for day two. In the men in chase, I did talk about John Bond. I'm I'm not, I'm in an hour in, but I'm to and from with him. He would be one that I know for a fact I would definitely bet if I was sat watching the race in. Who knows? Maybe we'll end up watching the race. But for the purpose of this, I, I, I fancy John Bond a bit, but I, I'm not betting him. It's similar to like a grey dawning thing, right? Price just I don't think is about there. Um, I, I like him, but it is just what it is, right? Talked about the uh, top um, life in the park, James de Burley, and the bit each way on Phlegmatic. So they stay as they are. So about 12 each way Phlegmatic, £12.50 sing, 12 singles on the other two on the exchange. Not doing anything in the Sefton, that is staying as it is. And then a the handicap hurdle, I've had £12.50 on Bully, and I've had £12.50 on Party Vibes. Party Vibes is so, so weak on the exchanges that, yes, I put the bet on. Yes, you might want to follow me in regardless because, no doubt, I'll obviously put the profit in there if it comes in. Weak as shit on the exchanges. So, for want of a better word, I'd probably just go for Bully in the last if you were following me in. But, obviously, don't want to not mention Party Vibes because you know I've had a bet on. But weak, you'll get a bigger price if you do want to bet it anyway. Right, let's get on to day three's bets. That's the reason we're here. I haven't said it already. <laughs> Maybe you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Oh, I'm in a funny mood today, right? So, three mile handicap, first race to kick off. I do like Johnny Hu as a horse. I just need to talk about him for a tiny, tiny second. I haven't bet him. He's 136 rated. I did like his shallow hurdle form. I think he just doesn't like Cheltenham. He could just come to life at a track like Andrew. He's much more like a new breed, more suited to the way that he'll run. He's short enough, though, I think. Um, but I'm, I, I, I haven't. I know I'm talking about the fact I put all my bets on. I haven't yet pulled the trigger on Johnny Hu. I might possibly this evening. So for the purpose of this video... If I don't do it, then I'm an idiot to myself, right? I'm going to have £25 win on Johnny Who. Now, you'll probably be saying, oh, you could bet him each way. And yes, 
could bet him each way. But I bet West Balboa. Now, after we talked with Jamie and we did the preview there, I bet West Balboa 11 to 1 we could get with Betfair. It was 10 to 1 when we did the record, and I had £25 straight win on there. Then I got the 11 to 1 on Betfair. So I've had £28, 27 each way. Weird stakes, right? But it was a bit of an account rounder. So basically, the equivalent of £25 each way on West Balboa at 11 to 1. Back to each way because I knew the price was too big, so I might as well get that extra bit of value. So that's where the Johnny Who bet's going to be a bit of a cover. Um, I'm just going to have 25 on him as that cover. So haven't struck it yet. We'll strike it. We move on. The 155, right? I love the fact that Matney, uh, Matney produced both Caldwell Potter and Brighter Days Ahead. Real good, nice damn line in there. I'm firmly in the camp though, right? Caldwell Potter's about five to two, so we'll just say that. Brighter Days Ahead's about two to one, but let's just for conversation's sake say they're both two to one pokes, right? They're not, but they're, they're a little bit bigger and like some bits, aren't they? But Jimmy the saw in Atlantique, right? If I pair those two, the winning money sources, let's just say they're both five to one, even though you can get 11 to two Jimmy DeSoy and you get six to one in Atlantique. If you paired them at five to one, that pays two to one for those in there. Now, there obviously are other horses in the race, but I don't see anything like Staffordshire, not Mahon's way, Bruce Seagal or Bugger Seagal, a spirit of Potter, or Joshua was actually winning this race. So you split it there into two to one buckets is what I'm saying. And I'd rather bet the two Willie Mullins horses against it. But I think Jimmy DeSoy is the best of the two. He'll be better off the front end as well. So what I've actually done is haven't split the stakes as I'm talking about doing there for the two to one. Because if Paul Townend had been on in Atlantic and Patrick had been on Jimmy DeSoy, I still would have wanted to bet him. But the confidence for uh, Jimmy being uh, Paul Townend being on Jimmy DeSoy, I prefer that much more. Right. So I've had £50 each way on Jimmy DeSoy, 11 or two, three places. Um is it three or is it four? I think it's three. Let me just double check. Uh, yeah, fifth of the odds, three places. That's with uh, Betfair on their sports book. And then I've also bet uh, a small bit on In Atlantique. It's about, about 17 quid on In Atlantique. It'll pay about 135. So small, small profit if In Atlantique goes and wins it. Jimmy DeSoy, I've obviously bet each way. Uh, make a small profit if he does place, but I think he's got a good chance of winning. I do respect Caldwell Potter and Bright Days Ahead, but I can't forgive her at two to one. And I don't like the fact that Caldwell Potter's gone to Nichols. I know he sound like an absolute arse of it. He'll take his time. He'll be fine. He'll mine horse. Yes, he will have nice bigger days ahead, but should have run in a Supreme as far as I'm concerned. This is the two and a half mile race. Like I said in the previous one, I've done this before. I'd have been smashing into Slade Steel had he had run in here. Um, sort of ruined that he's not, but I've, I've, I think I found an in. Now with the 50 each way I've done on Jimmy Desoy, I was, I'm in an RM with what to do. I was toying with just having the split stakes between the two of them. Wanted a bit more on Jimmy Desoy, but didn't really feel so comfortable having a 50 pound winner on him and 25 on Atlantic. So I've actually staked a bit more. I've had about 120 quid on the way, 117. But I feel more comfortable having the 50 each way on Jimmy Desoy. So it doesn't feel like the best bet. Um, and I'm not just betting for the sake of betting, but I do think that Jimmy Desoy's run, right, when he ran just by an agent master giving him seven pounds, was fifth uh, five lengths in a uh, supreme wasn't he and i think that baddie more race well we know how good baddie burn is i know they're ready to pick up the pieces but i think he'd be better off the front end so i think he could be good i think he has got a winning chance but i'd be disappointed if he didn't place um it could be you'll be able to judge it yourself it could be the case of i'm having a bet for having a bet in the three mile one handicap chase crabilly will get redemption for cheltenham there's only two more fences even though it's an extra five furlongs further up yes he's jumping is a little bit ropey but I think he'll get away with it. I don't think the fences come as thick and fast at Aintree. Um, and even without his jumping, I think he'll be there or thereabouts. He is seven to two, right? And again, I said about potentially waiting and all those types of things with some of them. You saw with the day one bets, right? I didn't get my entry points right on those ones. It's possible it's going to happen here again. I could just bet a bet fair SP, but I've just had a ton on. So 100 on Crabilly at 4.5 on the exchange, just slightly over. So that actually does return. Um, Three was it? Yeah, three fifty profit, and then I've also had twenty five on King of Rio. I know Paul Beck that was on the channel. He's real keen on this horse's chance, right? The ground didn't look that soft today, did it? So he really, really, really fancies King of Rio. I've just had twenty five quid win on him. I don't want to be the burden on his back. If he goes and wins, then happy days. Be really, really pleased for Paul, and I hope he does run well. But I want some redemption for Grabilly. So I've had a hundred quid on him. We see a lot of these horses, don't we? They chelp them like Happy Go Lucky get beaten and they come and win here. Yes, it's different because Happy Go Lucky had run in the, the three mile race before, but Crabilly has got some stamina in his pedigree. He's grand dam produced a, an Ida Chase winner and he's staying on his point. So I know that staying on a point doesn't definitely mean it, but I'll give him a chance. That's why we've had 100 on him. We're trying to go for some redemption, right? The 305, the Liverpool hurdle, I would have been smashing into Irish points. So Slade to Irish point with two bets that have gone to beg him, but it doesn't matter, right? They're not running here. Tell you who is running here. Monkfish, you're going to think I'm mad, so I'll sell this one quickly, right? Florin Porter got a 160 RPR for his second in the stairs hurdle. He's twice been beaten in this race after winning at Cheltenham, right? He hangs. He doesn't like it. You saw the finish in that Aintree hurdle where they're all on the inside, the bumping and stuff between Bob Ollinger, Langadan, Impere Pass. 
they'll be the same in the stairs. Flo Florian Potter is going to hang himself over to this side. He, I, I can't have him at this track, right? But he did a 160 RPR last time at a track that suits when he managed to get the rail. Monkfish did 160 in that Galmoy. Now, he was weak, weak in the betting in that Galmoy. I thought he would win. He should have beaten some of boy. He did. He won that race. Obviously, the Gold Cup was a different discipline. He bled. That is a worry. But he's 12 to 1 at the time I'm doing this. It's ridiculous. He, he will be single figures and i think he's about four or five to one poke i've bet him on the exchanges i've managed to i say manipulate i've managed to just get a bit bigger the average odds i've got on him there are 15.86 so about 14 to one of our 25 pound win now i would have been looking because it's four places up for grabs to have and say 50 quid each way on him at 10 to one i don't want to drive to a betting shop to do it so i'm leaving it as that so a 25 pound win on monkfish obviously the bleeding he might bomb out of there but at the price i would recommend him as an each way bet um, I like him. I think I think he's got a chance. He's better off than all of these, and he, it's a bit probably clingy, but we've only tied a small amount up in there, haven't we? Grand National itself, I've done this in other videos, but I'll just quickly touch on a few of them. I have backed Kitty's Light. I've had £12.50 win on Kitty's Light at 16s. I've had... What have I had? I'm just putting it up on Betfair now. I've had 17 50 on Meeting of the Waters. He ticked a lot of trends as much as I know that he's probably not the one. I still have to have a little bit on him. Um, I've had a bit on Limerick Lace as well, 12.50. Interesting that JP McManus said he's had a bit his way on that one. I've had a five on Shambard and a five on McTotty at big prices on the exchange. I've also done top five finish on the exchange, but I've done Betfair SP on both of those, McTotty and um, Shambard, just to place. So they'll probably be like 10s, 12s to 1s. For those in there, Grand Nash was never a race that I'm going to really get stuck into, to be honest with you. So they're bets for the sake of betting, right? It's a bit of fun, isn't it? Also, I suppose that, that the wedding will be going on during then, so I might have to sneak onto my phone. Have a lovely time, everyone. Right. In the grey one, Novices Chase. It's the Maggle Novices Chase. I really, really, really like Founder 50. Um, I think he was 9 to 4, 3.35. Yes, yeah, so he was 9 to 4 with bookies. I had 125 on him. I then cashed it out and I did him on the exchanges. So I've got 3.35. The return is 287.88 from 125 on pound of 50. I think he's got real good form. Now, I talked about Matata at Cheltenham. Did run well, but a Maka Angel could probably run better. But I still think there was enough. Like, we've beaten so well that I, I just think found a 50 staying at two miles is the right bet in the race. I think he's a reasonable price. I think probably should be like a seven to four poke. Maybe a tiny bit shorter, to be fair. Um, feels about right doing that. Like, I do respect Etalon. You saw what Langadan did going out of Handicap Company, running into a proper grade one. And Hercule de Saul, yes, from October, had a massive layoff. That Sanicha race, I said it at the time, didn't I? Sanicha should have beaten him. Um, bad ride by Philip Enright. Not that it makes much of a difference now. It's all hindsight. But Hercule de, Hercule de Saul, I think he's probably close to a 160s horse. The layoff's a bit of a worry. I know they did it with gentlemen to me before, but... If he was being backed and supported, I'd be more worried, and he's not. So that may happen. He may get backed in. But anyway, I've had the 125 on pound of 50. And in the bumper, Mr. Meggett does look like an absolute weapon. I'm sure lots of people will be wanting to steam in, Jim. So you do as you wish. It's a bumper, right? Um, I've gone for Ma Shantu for Emma Lavelle. Now, I haven't gone mad on this one. A uh, bit of an each-way bet because there's four places up for grabs. I've done this on the old three of bet 365. I've had 18.75 each way. Yes, I'm a randomer, I know. 240 quid that return, nine to one um, got on that horse. Uh, and obviously there's a place part of that could come back in. So that's the lot of it. I'm going to wrap it up now because I'm not be going on for too long. I'll put a link in the description below that's for the cheat sheet for the Friday. There's a separate one for Grand National. So I'll put a link in for that as well. Again, does me a favor if you click on there. Link clicks in it. Clickbait. Um, and then I've done that in the other videos as well. So you can see those other ones. As I say, please do like the video. Make sure you subscribe. Drop a comment below because as much as I won't see it now, I will catch up with all of them uh, when I get back. Who knows? I might even have a look at a few in the airport tomorrow morning when we're waiting for our northern mate to turn up. On the other side, anyway, be lucky. Have real, real good weekends, uh, whatever you're doing. Enjoy the racing. Enjoy your betting. Please do gamble responsibly. We've had some good action today. There's still some good stuff to come, but you'll see from my bets and all that sort of stuff. I thought the better bets were potentially today. Still got some good chances to come, though. Um, good luck if you do follow me in. And I will just add this last, last part in the whole responsible gambling type scenario, right? I know I've had the three winners today. And this isn't me saying it so I can be like, oh, I've had three winners today. But look, even at the prices I put him in at, I made uh, Sergino like a twos on poke, so 66% chance of winning. I made Jerry Collum about an even money poke, so 50% chance of winning. So that puts it as 116%. And then in pair A pass, maybe about six to four shot win it, so 50% chance of winning. If you add them in and I'm genuinely right being bullish and all that sort of stuff, 166% means I should have got one and two thirds winners. So if you want to be generous and round it up, if I'm a good judge, I should have got two out of three. If I'm a bad judge, then I'm maybe going to get none or one. The relevance of me bringing that up is 
Long term, I will bet. And long term, I think I know good value. Obviously, I missed the prices on some of those horses today in the fact that I got in early. So they actually had less of a chance than I gave them credit for. But obviously, having those few winners today, I've achieved over my own expectations as well. So within betting full stop, the variance of things that go out there, I'm going to have some horses that I think should win that are probably going to get beat. It's just the way that it is, right? I'd like to believe that every horse I bet will win. Who knows? We might still have another couple of fantastic days. But please, please, please just tread carefully with obviously inform tipsters. I've had a very good day today. Doesn't necessarily mean that's going to continue. I'm confident in what I do. I know long term that I do return a bit of money. That's why I'm happy to share my stakes and my profit and loss from actual betting accounts online. I know a lot of people are happy to talk about what they bet. Don't want to do that. And again, that's fine. No one has to do it. But from a betting perspective, right, it will be easy for a few of you that might watch this video now after I've had a few winners. Yes, please do follow me in. But have a look back at the day one video as well so you can see stakes in on there. So you'll see that I'm not necessarily as confident on on some of the next couple of days. And I am betting slightly differently because I'm not going to be about to do different bits with it. Anyway, I've waffled more than enough. Stick a bet on if you want to stick a bet on. Like I say, gamble responsibly. Make sure it's formed by your own decision. There's plenty of good content, loads of free stuff that's out there where you can get a balance of a few people, different people's opinions. Um, yeah, fuck it. Get stuck in. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the Grand National. And I will see you guys next week.